everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Always Open, a show about mental health, sex, relationships, and everything in between. I'm your host, Barbara Dunkelman, and today I'm joined by two wonderful guests, starting with Alfredo Diaz. Woo! And Thanks special, special guest, first time podcaster, <laughs> extra special. Booyah! <laughs> Hi, Booyah! Hello. Welcome. Yeah, it's the first podcast. Okay, slow clap. <laughs> I think one of my favorite things in existence is y'all's relationship. I know. <laughs> and how it's like, if no one knew, they would think that you hated each other. Oh, 100%. <laughs> we we are either in bidding with each other mode or going after each other for no reason. Yeah, mode. just yeah. random shit talk or competing with each other. Like, That's true. I remember one time we were talking about like gifted subs uh -huh. and then like we got to like God. Like yeah, we were yeah. like, yo, thanks God for like the host <laughs> or something. Yeah, we were like, oh, thanks Elon. I was like, yo, God, thanks for the <laughs> Because, yeah, where do you go from there? Yeah. Hey, yo, thank you, creator of the universe. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Almighty, yo. Well, welcome to the show. Thank you. Welcome, welcome. And Alfredo, welcome back. Yeah, it's good to be back. You haven't been on Always Open in a hot second. Yeah, I love this show, though. The la I feel like the last time we had you on was actually, I think, the last episode we ever did before the pandemic. Oh, where we were talking about been. like having to quarantine with yeah. everybody and That's stuff like that. That's true. And I think I, I, I twerked on that, I think. Probably. Yeah. What episode don't you twerk on? It's true. <laughs> Dude, he's a serial twerker. It's true. You gotta watch no, out for it. Oh no, I feel like going on. Y'all's got Twitch staff in your chat. Is you gonna twerk today? No. <laughs> you never know. You gotta keep on your toes. He's doing like the. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh man. Uh, well, Fuya, for those of you who uh, don't know Fuya, could you tell people where they might know you from or where they might have mm. seen you? You've been in some Rooster Teeth content? Yeah. I have, um, I have a history in the esports community. Uh, oh. mm. Ever since I was 14, I played like COD. So I was known within the COD community. Uh, born COD immunity. The COD immunity. <laughs> uh, I was actually, I'm Canadian as well. Uh, moved to, <laughs> yo, represent, <laughs> oh, Canada. <laughs> 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 um, I, I think uh, my teen years, 19, I moved uh, to the US of A mm -hmm. for a mm -hmm. team, an esports org for Cal uh, Call of Duty uh, Team Caliber. So, I didn't know that. Yeah, that's why I'm here. Um, a lot of people knew me from there. And then just from that, just got into streaming heavily and been a content creator ever since. So mm -hmm. yeah, I've been in like some Rooster Teeth stuff. Did uh, Survive Block Island season two. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 I got a, I got a few enemies here. Yeah, I got some of which didn't even show up today because they're so mad. <laughs> I got to deal with little Lexi in Vegas. Sorry about that, Lexi. Uh -huh, I heard what uh -huh. a menace you were in that. Yeah, I loved it. I watched that season. It was just like I, you know, Fre Fredo and I played together on the first yeah. season. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, uh, I mean you know, I, if you want to say play, yeah, I mean, you know. uh, but I was thinking how fun it would be if we ever did another season, to like, like a yeah, do like an all stars like kind an all -star of thing. Season. Yeah. Dang. I was telling people didn't make it not all stars then. Mm -hmm. But the people that aren't on that season aren't all stars. I was gonna say. Ooh. Well, I mean, I'm no, definitely not. I mean, <laughs> maybe I won't make it. <laughs> I think you would. I think you would. It's usually like the most controversial people. Okay, I'm making it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in. Oh, never mind. <laughs> oh, I'm in. Uh, and for those of you who don't know, uh, Survive Block Island is a series we did at Rooster Teeth, which we took uh, Survivor and put it in Minecraft, essentially. Mm -hmm. And uh, Fredo and, and I were season one. Fuya did season two. Oh, yeah. It was... Uh, Fuya was a, a damn menace running around with Michael the entire time. And Barb and I were just the cerebral <laughs> killers. <laughs> it's just absolutely... You can trust me. You can't trust me. It yeah. was brutal. No one ever suspects the Canadians. <laughs> ne and we never betrayed each other. It's true. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. Um, but it was a lot of fun. And yeah, you do Twitch streaming and stuff like that. Yeah. People, I'm sure if they follow anybody who streams here, yeah. Rooster Teeth has seen you I in those streams with Among Us. Yeah. Saturday yeah. Among Us, yo. Yeah, Danny and I... Um, Fui and I play every. I, I just give Who's Danny? I don't know. Fui and I play. Uh, we do Among Us every Saturday, and both of you guys are a part of that. And it's a lot of running around and shenanigans. Some of my favorite moments, favorite memories, are from that Among Us Saturday lobby. Yeah, like the feet picks. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's it. that's just that's my favorite very, in general. I feel like that's like a, if you know, you know. If, <laughs> if Fuya sent or, me a screenshot, or, or just publicly, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. coming out of like a French fry box. <laughs> oh yeah, I, I did tweet that one out. <laughs> oh, yeah. There was uh, Fuya sent me a screenshot of like how what my name looks like in her contacts. Yeah, and you know how like if you go to that page, you could also see like photos that you exchange with someone. Yep. 
And right below, you just see a picture of her foot holding a little cup. No, it's, hold, it's holding like a Stanley water bottle. But it's like holding it like a hand. Like it looked, I, have, I have like longer toes, so. Oh, fuck, dude. And it's just like right there. Yeah. How do we get to feet pics so fast? Every Saturday. Every Saturday. Yeah. We make it a mission. Among Us and feet pics. Yep. Yeah. The combination of, of the gods. <laughs> All right. Well, let's get into our show. We got some some topics and some questions today. Okay. Um, and if this is your first time watching the show, welcome. If it's not, welcome as well. Um, every week we answer questions that you guys submit and you could send those to alwaysopen at roosterteeth.com. We would love to hear from you. So the first question I have for you guys, which is kind of like an icebreaker question. Mm. Is ghosting someone ever acceptable? So for those of you who don't know what ghosting is, it's usually via text or any sort of like online mm -hmm. communication where you just essentially go completely silent, don't respond to anybody, essentially cut them out of your life, so to speak. Not You're like the sexy Patrick Swayze. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> arms around the back. Arms around the back. Someone's like sculpting <laughs> stuff together. Someone's yeah, minding yeah. their business, you just come around. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> In that case. I'm, I'm ghosting you, I'm ghosting you. Don't worry about it, I'm ghosting you. Shh, you're getting ghosted, it's fine. But it's okay. <laughs> For some reason, when you started saying like sexy, I thought you were talking about coming out in like a bed That's sheet. what I thought. <laughs> <laughs> I always think like Pac-Man ghosts though, for some reason. <laughs> Look, I don't know, I'll, 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 throw, I'll throw a sheet over myself and then I'll have Jackie, uh, my significant other, in a Mrs. Pac-Man outfit. And there I'll you just go. go. Oh no! Oh no, don't catch me. Don't eat me. <laughs> Hope I don't get some cherries. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I was gonna make a really bad, can I make like a bad joke? <laughs> I'm like, I can't really throw a white sheet over my head because that could be taken the wrong way. <laughs> True. I feel like the the days of the ghost costume, I, fe I feel like that's past. I bro, like I don't like the costume. It does not look appropriate anymore. <laughs> it's like, nah, it's cool, bro. Man, it's, it's, it's cool. <laughs> as long uh, as you have the eye holes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so what do you guys think? Have you ever been <clears throat> ghosted, I guess, to start? I've actually I've been ghosted and I'm not gonna lie, I've ghosted someone before, mm, but okay. there's like a story to it. Cause okay. like, Do tell. I did ghost someone because I, this was like my, maybe around like my early twenties. I was like 21, 20. Um, I, I met, I hung out with them for a weekend and I like didn't feel it there. And like, like a date. Yeah, it was, mm -hmm. well, it was like a weekend day. It was actually a, like an event. And then after that, I didn't really feel it. So I ghosted him for a week, like straight up ignored, like the definition of ghost, but I've always wanted to work on my communication. So it took me a week and I like, I felt bad about it, of course. And I know how it feels to be ghosted. Mm -hmm. I came back a week after I apologized for like cutting off communication. I just needed to get things sorted out, but I don't think ghosting is okay. Cause like yeah. I did it, but like, I don't think it's an okay thing to do. What was the uh, story of you being ghosted? Yeah. I just feel like, yeah, we've all been ghosted oh. sometimes. Just straight Hello? up like, hey, I really like you. What? It's just like, oh, please How's reply. It? How's it going? <laughs> I was really digging that, <laughs> that hangout sesh. Yeah. Oh. There's, a, there's a friend of mine, I won't name any names. He uh, recently went on a date. He's like newly single. And he went on a date that he felt really good about. Mm -hmm. He was like, yeah, we stayed out. And like, we ended up closing the place down. And we were just talking, talking, talking. And like, we're really excited to like see each other again. And he said that he had texted her, didn't respond. The next day, like, kind of did, like, a follow-up text. No response the rest of the day. Oof. And then saw her watching his Instagram stories. I don't get that. And it's like, uh, if you're going to ghost what? someone, yeah. like, what? actually ghost yeah, them. Get right. them you know? out of yeah. here. Like, don't give them this weird thing of, like, I'm just clearly not responding yeah. to you on purpose. I think more so than ever, ghosting is not kosher because of the day and age that we live in, right? Mm. It, yeah. The exact example was what you just said. Yeah. Like, the Instagram stories. It's like, you're not talking to me, but you're watching my Instagram stories. It's all over the place. It's mixed <clears throat> right. signals. And it's like, it's very hard to ghost someone. And it's even more, I would say, hurtful to ghost someone oh, because yeah. they could see you posting on Twitter or like posting on Instagram or always whatnot. Always on our phones. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's no excuse. Like, oh, sorry. I was busy. It's like, I, I know right. you picked up your phone. Yeah. Like, at, that's a lie. I saw you liking photos. 50 <laughs> times today. Yeah. I mean, like you could, you could track people's like activities and stuff like that too. Mm -hmm. I would say the only way that it is like okay is if it was a very bad relationship, right? Yeah. Or, in, or like, in, in any way, shape, or form, you go into that realm of like this was a bad relationship. Oh yeah, ghost away. You know. Um, I would say the difficult ghosting situation is if like you break up with someone or someone is like really feeling you or you're not feeling them or vice versa. Yeah. And it's just like. Every time you hang out, someone's getting their feelings hurt. Ugh. 
that's the sticky situation mm-hmm. where it's just like you you're kind of forced to ghost because it's right. like look every time we hang out i'm getting my feelings hurt or you're getting yeah. your feelings hurt and like it's just causing issues that we can't exist together without someone like being hurt interesting yeah that's a good point yeah i so with ghosting i have a very sore spot for it <laughs> especially when it comes to like friends ghosting not necessarily like romantic partners oh. or anything like that mm-hmm. Because what I, in my head, I much prefer someone just say like, no. Yeah. Or like, yeah. oh, hey, like I'm actually busy or I'm not having a good day today or like I don't really feel like socializing or whatever it is rather than no response whatsoever. And I have some people in my life who just like prefer not to respond to things <laughs> rather than uh. just be like, oh, I can't, sorry. <clears throat> Which is totally fine. Yeah. Like think of it from the other perspective of like, would you rather be trying to make plans with someone and they just like don't respond ever rather than just know for a fact like this person can't do this? Yeah. And so, that's fine. Well, that's like that's the issue with ghosting. I feel like ghosting is very much like a younger mentality thing because I think so. I think it's the reason people ghost is lack of communication skills because really it's just like just saying no. And a lot of people can't do that. Under, yeah. like, it's, it's about learning. And like, of course, there's factors that lead up to it. But like with the not. I forgot the point I was gonna make. <laughs> I did that all I was the like time. talking. I was like, blah, blah, blah. dude, I try not to say like a lot, but uh, yeah, ghost, ghosting bad. Don't but do it. But it, it would have blown your mind. It would have solved yeah, all the issues so in your life. Dude, it was but my, I forgot about it. Yeah. I can't tell you how many times I'm in the middle of talking on a podcast and I'm like, I don't know where I'm going with this, but I'm gonna keep talking. Yeah. I, had a good, I had a good point, but yeah, well, I mean, the first part I made where it's like a very immature thing to do. Yeah. But I have friends. I have friends where I want to make a plan and I try to. Like, I'm. I like to say I'm really good with communication. Mm-hmm. I've gotten really good at saying, hey, I'm not feeling this. Hey, I need this in like our friendship or like relationship. But when you don't get it back, like that's what's stressful. But then like I've kind of just like, I've started to like cut those kind of people out. Yeah. It's, like, I just think that there's there's some people who fear that by saying no or by like backing out of plans, they're gonna like hurt the friendship somehow. I would say that's too soft of a friendship. I'm soft. sorry. Yeah, like, I'm yeah. serious. Like, if For people, sure. if people are, are feelings are getting hurt because you said no to, like, a Saturday movie plan, like, what are you, what are you doing? Uh, it's so much worse in life than that. And it's the same with, like, when you're dating someone and if you're not feeling it, like, I would rather much be in a situation where someone's like, hey, you know, like, enjoyed the time we spent together, but, like, unfortunately, this is not, you know, I, I don't really see this moving forward. Yeah. And so, like, mm. just wanted to let you know. Yeah. And like, yeah, it sucks to get that kind of message and it's like could be pretty hurtful to someone who might have been really interested in you. But I'm sure that person would prefer that than to get ghosted. Well, that's the thing is like ghosting someone hurts someone. It leaves you with with the what ifs. So like you drive people crazy. It's like, why isn't this person talking to me? Like, what did I do? But in reality, it's just like, they just weren't feeling it. And it's like, that's all someone needs to hear. It's just like, just let them go. Let them go. (laughs) It sucks to do, but it's for the best. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Of just being like, no, sorry. Let me watch your Instagram stories yeah. late at night. Yeah, I'm going to ghost you, but like, what are you up to, though? What are you doing, though? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You up, though? So I hope this friend of mine uh, gets a yeah, closure on the situation. That, that question was actually just like a subtweet. You're like, is ghosting fun? Yeah. No, it's not. Don't ghost, I actually. don't know her name, but if you're watching. <laughs> Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> don't. Just don't. Mm. Uh, all right, let's get into some of our questions. Yes. This one is a bit of a long one, so strap in. Okay. It's okay. I pre-read it. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) I read the whole email. Good, good. So you're prepared. So this one reads, I'm a 25-year-old man and have been in a committed relationship with my current girlfriend for a little over three and a half years. While I do love her to death, the further along we get in our relationship, the more uneasy I start to feel about the future together. I will say that both of us come from divorced households and both of us have unresolved trauma that we're working through that relates to one or both parents. For me, I see marriage as something very serious, and I've also had in mind that whenever I got married, I would it would be a one-and-done situation. I want that person to genuinely be my forever person without having the fear of divorce looming in the background. We're both the same age, and she's always making mention of how she'd like to get married, and so many people at our age are getting married as well. But whenever the conversation comes up of potential of us getting married, I tend to get dodgy because it makes me uncomfortable thinking about forever when there's so many things in my life I want to get sorted beforehand. And I've let her know about my uneasiness when those conversations arise. Here's where things get iffy. I have the chance to get my master's degree in the UK, and when I finally told her about the possibility of this opportunity, 
She was very supportive and said that as long as she could come with me to the UK, she has no issues with me pursuing my passions. At this point, we're looking to move next year, fall of 2024. And while that's something that's very exciting on paper, I feel uneasy when I think about our future prospects together, namely when it comes to our values and wants. For example, I've always had it in mind that I want four kids, while for her, the idea of childbirth is terrifying. Admittedly, I know adoption is always an option, but my ego wants something of my own creation. <laughs> it's alive. <laughs> it's alive. <laughs> I also have it in my head that my wedding would be this huge affair where everyone I truly consider a friend or loved one would be involved. But for her, she wants something more small or intimate. To top it off, it sometimes feels like we're sexually incompatible, which I have a lot of guilty feelings about. I'm a lot more kink friendly while she's very vanilla. I love her dearly, and while I do see a future with her, I feel like whenever I think about us down the road, our ideas of what forever looks like feel so fundamentally different at times, and it makes me wonder if it's worth either of our time to try and see that through fully, or maybe we're too far apart for it to really make sense either way. So my question after all of this is, <laughs> how should I go about having these uncomfortable conversations about the future with her? And at what point should I have to come to grips with the fact that maybe she's really great, She's just not my forever person, even if I want her to be that. Or am I just making a big deal out of nothing and letting my anxiety drive the ship? In the end, I would never want her to change or sacrifice parts of herself for the sake of our relationship. Hmm. Woo. It's loaded. loaded. Loaded question. It's a lot Woo. to unpack there. Yeah. Before we unpack it. <laughs> <laughs> that was actually my, like, my input. Oh, <laughs> yeah, <just kidding. laughs> uh, I feel like the biggest, because I actually did read this over yesterday and I was thinking about it. I was thinking about what this person's going through and I very much have been in that situation where I'm head over heels for someone, but then I start to think like, oh my God, I'm, am I going to get married to this person? Like, is this my forever? Yeah. So my biggest thing is like, I always tell my friends and I tell myself, never think too far in advance because you can't control situations and like thinking about, is this my forever? I feel like anxiety and forever just don't go together. Like you'll never be able to think positively about forever when you have it like when you come with it with you'll anxiety think of everything that could possibly everything, go wrong everything that yeah. can go wrong so i i think like the biggest thing is like a, a lot of it is he's overthinking it with anxiety mm -hmm. I, I don't know it's, it's, a, it's a it's a weird situation because it's not us and we don't know how he truly feels like if you love this person like the compromise of being unsure about your forever is one thing you should take because they're clearly compromising by wanting to move to the UK with you. Like mm -hmm. they, they want, want to support you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And they want the children, but like they don't know if they want to have their own children. Like they want to adopt and like maybe that's a compromise they can make. Like, uh, I don't know. It just, it's a weird situation. It's a very weird situation. It's very deep and very uh, layered as yeah, well. It's layered. I feel like we should break it down. <laughs> yeah. Um, one thing I will say is I think there's a lot of things within your relationship that are very compromisable mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i don't know if that's the right word no, for yeah. it the only thing i would say that should not have to be a compromise in a relationship is kids yeah like y if you want kids and your partner isn't sure or like really <laughs> does not want kids that's a huge red flag yeah exactly yeah. um and maybe like she doesn't know her feelings yet and like maybe you might change your mind you never know but if that ends up being something that you guys don't see eye to eye on that's a pretty clear like this is not yeah, you can't force that. There's been too many people that I know or have heard of where there's like <coughs> one wanted kids, one didn't want kids, right. and they just kept thinking that the other one would fold in the other's direction and it doesn't work out. I think the the great thing about this situation is that there's at least a baseline level of communication. Yeah. Which is which is fantastic. And the thing is, it's a relationship. You're going to have <gasps> hard conversations <laughs> no matter what that's how so, they work so you you've <laughs> the thing is like you've already had hard conversations mm -hmm. they're like and these are harder yes but there will be conversations that are even harder than that oh yeah in the future um so i, I think you just keep going down that path of like hey you create this safe environment we're talking we're figuring things out let's have this conversation mm -hmm. let's talk about this 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 also you, you guys are fairly young 25 25 yeah. oh they're only 25 yeah yeah um, similar age yeah has <laughs> an almost 34 year old in it you're right. gonna be 34 about to be 34 comes out yeah uh, um young uh, little babies jackie and i will be together for oh god like so almost seven or eight almost eight wow and so sitting there it's just like yeah i mean like we i we got together when i was like like 26 or something like that so a lot has changed and so 
um, I, I think like a lot will continue to change. And so like to continue to have those conversations yeah. is, is going to be the, the key factor there. And so many people, so many people, everyone puts pressure on marriage. Oh my at, God. at the end of the day, all that matters is if like this is the person you want to be with. It doesn't have to have a label on right. it. You don't have to do the wedding. You don't like you want this person. I get I get the stress. Like my parents are divorced. I don't want that for like my future family, kids, mm-hmm. etc. And and so like don't stress out over the whole thing of marriage and all that kind of stuff. Like walk into it when it's time. Right. Well, live it by like your timeline. Yeah. That's like the biggest thing. Don't, I know. There's no time. Like there's no, shouldn't be married by 30, get this by 35. Like there's no timeline that you need to follow. Right. The only thing would, I would say is like, if you do want kids. If, yeah, kids, yeah. The older, <laughs> older yeah. the, your partner gets, the more, you know, potential dangers there could mm-hmm. be in, in childbearing and stuff Well, even like now, I think like you can like, do a bunch of like those cryo freeze yeah, eggs. Cryo freeze eggs. eggs. Yeah. yeah. That sounds so like, like, evil like, villain. Like Austin Powers. <laughs> <laughs> um, this might be a controversial take on this. Uh-huh. But I feel like if you're having concerns, that might be a sign that this might not be your forever person. Yeah. Like if, if there are a number of things that you're pointing to where it's like we're not compatible on this or we don't see eye to eye on that. And if it's not something that is like negotiable or something that like one person's going to change on. And if you're already having concerns, that might be kind of a sign that like, maybe it's not meant to be. See, I don't find that controversial because it's like the reality to the situation. And you got to remember like you're having these doubts, but this person is spending their life with you. They want to move to where you go. Like they're cha- they're altering their life for you. And the biggest thing to that is like, you just got to let them, you got to let them go. If you know that in your heart, like they're not your one, like right. you got to let them go and find their person. That's like a big thing too. I also... I, I'm sure some people might not agree on this either, but like if you do stay together and end up getting married and then later on f- figure out like, oh, this is not right. This is not working out. You could get divorced. Yeah. Like, I know you don't want a- to. And I know like in the question, he wants it to be like a one and done kind yeah. of situation. Don't we all? You could, you could get divorced. <laughs> yeah. Like it's, you don't have to get married. You, if you do and you change your mind later, that's okay. Yeah. Like these things happen. It's part of life. And you shouldn't fault yourself for it. Yeah, I think people put like such a big red flag when it comes to a, a, like a divorce. But like people are always changing and growing. Mm-hmm. And then also like it could just be better. Like if you have even if you have kids, it's just like I don't want to get divorced. I was a part of a divorce household. And so like I knew what the effect was and it was very messy. Like mm-hmm. for for my situation, it was a battle over custody, like visiting like, oh, wow. like maybe, having like maybe that's where it's so funny. surveyed. Yeah, no, kids of divorce. You know, kids of <laughs> divorce. Well. Yeah. They're just hilarious. That's COVID mechanism. <laughs> humor. <laughs> so, like, I understand the like. I've been on the extreme side of like like having someone monitor visitation rights wow. and all that kind of stuff. So, I, I've been on that side. But if the environment is not good, it's it's the lesser of two evils, unfortunately. Yeah, and you you just can't predict the future. You don't know how things are going to shape up. You don't know what's going to happen to you, yourself, uh, like your other. And so, mm. yeah. But I would I would definitely go with your advice, Fuya, that you said before, like, yes. live in the now. I mean, I'll, everyone. It's <laughs> not a point-based <laughs> system here, bro. <laughs> <laughs> One point, but yeah. She takes the first question. Congratulations. Um, thank you, God, for the sub. Um, but I will say, like, I agree. Like, are you happy now? Yeah. Are you enjoying oh, your relationship now? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, thanks. Good. Um, like, don't don't stress too much about the future. Like, obviously, there are certain things you do have to plan out and, like, know that you want to get there eventually. Um, I dated someone for a few years where uh, I would ask, like, hey, like, not asking to do this anytime soon, but, like, would you ever want to move in together? Mm-hmm. And he would always be like, I don't know. I don't know. Like, I haven't, re- like... I don't really think about that. And I'm like, I get it. I'm not asking like tomorrow or even this year, <laughs> yeah. but like ever. Yeah. You hide the yeah. key. You're like, yeah, it's dumb. Yeah, yeah, it's dumb. Yeah. Yeah. Why would we do that? That doesn't make any sense. Save Unpack money. Unpack his clothes yeah. from my, uh, my room. Um, so yeah, I would say like, are you happy now? Do you like where this is going? Then just trust that. Yeah. And if things change later, they change later. Yeah. There's another portion of that too, which talked about uh, sexual compatibility. Oh yeah. And like, I, I, I'm a strong believer in that you can't underplay that. No. True. Yeah. I, I think like sexual compatibility is like very important. And I think it 
uh, again, like anything, it starts with communication. You know what I mean? Like, if you're if he's into the kinkier stuff and she's not, then you guys can try and find a middle ground. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or you know, there are fun ways to introduce each other to it. You could, you know what I mean? Like, you can get like a little book with a calendar and like, oh, today we, we we're kissing each other's necks. Or you know, <laughs> there's today even doing apps these, that yeah, or you could like exactly like um in private go through and like essentially swipe right on the things that you'd be really? okay trying. And then mm. it will match them with your partner Wait, to see what they also swiped right on. That's actually nice. It's really smart mm. because then it like takes away that potential uncomfortableness. Like, yeah, I do think if you're in a relationship, especially like if you're sexual with someone, having that very open communication and feeling vulnerable and feeling comfortable in that situation is important. But if you're not, it's a good way to mm-hmm. do it. Yeah. So I'm so I mean, I just went over to Jackie. I was like, how do you feel about kneecaps and mayonnaise? Was, was, <laughs> Which part is the uh, different way? Yeah, yeah, yeah. well, I'm confused. Are we kneeling in the mayonnaise? <laughs> That's that for us to figure out. Hey. Oh, my God. <laughs> I throw I throw the randomest things. At, not, not, well, yes, both sexually, but like outside of like yeah. sexually. It's just, I just throw random stuff at Jackie. That's how I know you guys are. Yeah. Good, she, good to go. She puts up, she puts up with it. <laughs> you know what's up. Now that it's summer, I find myself wanting to spend more and more time outdoors and less and less time in the kitchen. Thankfully, Factor, which happens to be America's number one ready to eat meal kit, can help you fuel up fast with flavorful and nutritious ready to eat meals delivered straight to your door. I cannot recommend Factor enough. It is so convenient. The meals are delicious. All you have to do is heat them up for two minutes and you have a fresh, delicious, healthy meal ready to go with good protein, vegetables, everything you need in a meal. And it's so amazing. It's so convenient. Cannot stress that enough. I love Factor very much. It seriously saves me so much time. Factor's fresh and never frozen meals are ready in just two minutes. All you have to do is heat and enjoy and then you can get back outside and soak up the warm weather. With over 34 chef-prepared, dietitian approved options every single week, there's always something new to try as well. And they have some new upscale options like surf and turf and roasted garlic filet mignon and shrimp if you're looking to elevate eating at home. So head to factormeals.com open50 and use the code open50 to get 50% off your first box. That's code open50 at factormeals.com open50 to get 50% off your first box. Enjoy your meals, my friends. You know that 11 a.m. feeling that after breakfast, not quite lunch, you're looking for a snack that's easy and filling and you are so freaking famished feeling? If that's you, you need to try nuts.com. Nuts.com is your one-stop shop for freshly roasted nuts, dried fruit, sweets, pantry staples like specialty flowers, and more. Their wide selection means there's something for everyone. I have my own selection of different offerings from nuts.com at home. We have the almonds, the healthy trail mix, uh, some of the dried fruit options as well, which is delicious. And the candied pecans, definitely recommend, delicious. Uh, Tons of different snacks to have at any time of the day. It's nutritious, it's delicious. Go get them. Plus, Nuts.com offers plenty of gluten-free options, organic choices, and other diet-friendly products. So whether you're looking for something sweet, savory, or need to stock up on everyday cooking essentials, you're bound to find something to try. Right now, Nuts.com is offering new customers a free gift with purchase and free shipping on orders of $29 or more at Nuts.com open. So go check out all of the delicious options at nuts.com slash open. You'll receive a free gift and free shipping when you spend $29 or more. That's nuts.com slash open. But again, it's important to like feel like you could be honest in in your relationship, especially with the person you've been with for three and a half years here. Yeah. Um, Yeah. I Sorry we don't have like a firm answer, but it's a complicated situation. I mean, mean, it's always like, if this, if you think this is your person, and I don't, I don't like being the person that says, like, go to therapy, and because it feels so like blank face, like just I'll go, like that's how you solve your problems. But like, if th- if you want this to be your forever person, and like you're feeling this, like three and a half years is not a small time either. Right. But you also have such a long time in your life. Like you could look into couples therapy to see, like, because like even just like probably like a month of it can see if like you you guys might both come to the realization that this isn't your guys is forever. Like it could just help push you in the the direction that you don't know what you're feeling. Yeah, because like 
Yeah, absolutely. Or maybe like you do end things and come back together a few years later when you both kind of yeah. figure yourselves out a little bit. Mm-hmm. You know? Also, you could look at it and take solace in the fact that like it seems like from a everyday personality matching standpoint, things are gravy, you yeah. know? And it, I mean, sure, you, you're stressing out and you're worried about incompatibilities about these major things, which are super important. But like you have that baseline connection there. Right. And so I think I think there's, you know, there's something to look at that and go like, okay, we match really, really well, so well that we're stressing out about like the future stuff, which is important, but yeah. I also didn't even do the math, but if he is 25 and they've been together for three and a half years. They're they're growing as adults together too. I mean, like that's a very young time to be starting a relationship. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but like, yeah, you might not even really know yourself too well at that point. Mm -hmm. I would say that you don't. And then you'll be 28 yeah. and you still don't. And then you'll get closer to 30 and you start to. And then yeah. you, and then your body changes and you go, okay, and maybe everything I, hurts. I don't know myself physically now. <laughs> yeah. I can't, oh, no, I can't bend down to tie I my shoes. I did this thing this morning where I was sitting on the floor and I went to get up and I was like, let me see if I could stand up without using my arms. And so I like, was like cross-legged and got up and I heard both my knees go. <laughs> <laughs> That's so it, funny. It'd be like that. You wake up hey. the wrong, you wake up, you, you turn too fast and your neck is like, uh, just like tear something for the day. Yeah. Yep. You'll learn something. I'm like just getting there. Like, well, yeah. I, mean, I also just sit in a chair for like 12 hours a day. So mm. I'm, I'm kind of speed running that. <laughs> you're like hunched over and you're like, why does my back always hurt? <laughs> <laughs> sometimes sometimes I'll be streaming for 12 hours and I'm like, oh, I'm like, chat, look at my posture and I'll turn. Yeah, and I'm, <laughs> like, I'm like, dude, check this out, guys. <laughs> oh, there have definitely been. I've like reviewed episodes of Always Open to like cut for social clips and stuff like that. And I'll look at myself and I'm literally like at the microphone <laughs> like this. And I'm like, what am I doing with my life? Yeah. Oh, it's the tech neck. That's the what they're calling neck. it, right? Or just like the neck. You've always had really good posture, Alfredo. <laughs> oh, thank you. Every time I see you, you're always just like. I, I'm trying. Up and at him. I'm trying. Good posture, bad spinal disc. You do. Bad <laughs> spinal good posture, bad everything else. Bad everything. Well, thank you for your question. Um, hope you figure it out. Hope you figure it out. Hope it works out. Good Feel luck. free to follow up with us. Always open at rishis.com if you uh, have any updates for us. If you break up, if you get married. I will say, though. Do not have kids to fix a relationship. Oh, please don't. Oh, no. Please do no, not no. do that. Get a dog. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so if you want some responsibility, yeah. do not bring a kid into this world to fix a relationship. All right. Well, let's move on to our second question from another youngin, a 26-year-old. We're going up in years. <laughs> oh, God. That's young. Oh. And this one reads, I'm a 26, almost 27-year-old woman who has been single for three years. My past relationship was four years. I suggested the relationship end because the two of us were in different places in our lives. It's been very freeing and I've learned so much for myself since then. I've been super content, basically. But now, because I'm almost 30, you're not almost 30, by the way, (laughs) I'm starting to feel a bit of pressure to start dating, even though I'm not sure I even want to. A close older family member has made comments here and there about me getting older and not having a steady relationship yet. It's like she thinks once I hit 30, I'm out of time or past my prime. She's also the type to think every woman needs a man in her life to be happy, which is totally a different ideology than my own. Even though I know we just think differently and I don't have to listen, I still feel almost self-conscious for preferring to be single. I'm also the type to let relationships just happen as opposed to seeking them out. So the idea of actively looking for people to date is not appealing to me at all. So long story short, my question is, Do you have any advice for blocking out those types of comments and ideas or maybe on setting boundaries with a person like that, someone who's stuck in their old ways of thinking and tries to push it onto you? Is it maybe just my lack of confidence or does this person simply need to mind their own business? Thank you in advance for the help and advice. See, I like this one a lot because I can actually relate a lot to them. Oh. To start it off, the person, obviously, people need to mind their own business. Like that's, it's not coming from a place of love because like they don't understand that like those comments are hurtful and like when you're constantly prying into someone's private life unless like my sister she she's like hey like, can i talk to you about something not just like oh you're coming single again to and the she's family like event. seeking advice from yeah you. exactly yeah. yeah you always give advice when it's asked for never just because so right. i think the biggest thing about that is um they had stated that they like enjoy being single and like that's very much like me like i'm so happy with my life not being in a relationship and i'm in the same sense where like I'm growing myself as a person, but I also can relate in the sense that I feel the pressures, especially Facebook. Everyone I've graduated, kids, oh married, yeah. house, and yep. like my friends around me, they're in long, like long-term relationships. So I think like, that pressure I understand, but I've kind of come to this like 
like big circle where like in the end like i'm not going to be able to be happy with someone if i'm not truly happy like being alone and if the insecurities of someone pressuring it's like 50 50 like yeah the pressure is getting in your head but at the same time like maybe you have that deep down inside that you're like pressuring yourself from like what you see around you and i don't really think that means you've fully come to that complete cir circle of like being truly happy being alone because yeah you know like the pressures and stuff i understand like you know time is of the essence for like children but like something I recently learned because I feel that too. That's where I'm like relate so heavily. I'm like, you know, I want, I thought it'd be cool to be like a mom, but I'm 27 and I'm in no position to be a mother like at like at the time. Isn't it weird to think about how like, I, like my parents, I think had my older brother at 32, which is now almost two years younger than I am. I'm like, I cannot imagine yeah. having one, let alone multiple kids at this age. <sighs> And like even at 27, yeah. when I was like in my late 20s, I'm like, people have kids. Yeah, yeah. I'm still a kid. Yeah, I, like, I, I, what the fuck? I, I can't. I can't believe it. Sometimes. Yeah. Um. Hmm. So I I I think that they already know the answer to the question. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. in terms of just like like I it's it's I would say you should be more so annoyed than actually like taking taking those comments and like really giving them life mm, which yeah. is easier said than done but you know the answer like it, don't listen to them oh. there's the, the, the it's just there's no point um like what is the alternative have a bunch of shitty dates uh just to try to you know what you i know, mean make someone else happy too. right yeah. exactly like force yourself to be happy uh spend a ton of money like it, especially like you're looking for like you know the natural i find someone it clicks Go for it. There's if there's no pressure or time whatsoever. The, like Fuya said, the only thing is maybe if you want kids like within a couple of years, even then you could we go back to it, freeze eggs, all that kind you of stuff. Adopt, you could get a sperm donor. Yeah. Like, exactly. And so it's like one of those things where I think you're on a great track. Uh, like you know the pace that you want to be on. Don't let anyone else challenge that and just keep doing you. I think when it comes to like addressing the person making this because who who is it making it's a family she said friend. it was like a, a close older family member yeah uh, the biggest thing is older like they're kind of still stuck in the like Different boomer generation. <laughs> okay <laughs> boomer yeah <laughs> when i bought a house you know <laughs> when it was forty thousand yeah, dollars yeah. to buy a house they're, they're very much still with three lemons <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're still stuck in the old mindset of like oh like this woman needs to have kids by this age and i think like the biggest thing is like that's not it's not okay because that's not your mindset and they're driven by a completely different time in their life and they're i guess they're it's their opinions onto you C like communicating that you don't like that but like some people they don't take communication well if they're yeah. like stop saying that to me so like you can say it nicely but like let them know that you're happy and like this is how you're gonna live your life because like you gotta you gotta like set boundaries because essentially this person's walking over you when they say that they're like hey, yeah like, all right you should because it hurts your feelings so. also the whole like you need a man no you don't kind of thing <laughs> Uh, no, you don't. You don't need no man. <laughs> Look at me. Hey, let me tell you. Need, let me tell Vibrators you. Vibrators exist. I, I was about to say, you don't need no man. Yeah. They got toys that function. You got toys. You got uh, God's toys. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you need. You need. Thank you, God. Hey, <laughs> hey what's up? <laughs> um, but, you know, if it wasn't for me finding Trevor and dating Trevor, I would love being single. Mm -hmm. I When I was single before dating him, it was some of, like, my happiest years and, like, you get to really like understand yourself and what you want, what you don't want, what you like, who you are. And like, if you're content with just being on your own and being single and living your life, that's fucking awesome. I know mm -hmm. there's nothing wrong with it. And like, yes, people are going to guilt you because I think that is a very old mentality kind of way of thinking of it. It's like, yeah, you need to get married. You need to have someone who will provide for you and protect <laughs> you and this and that. It's like provide for myself. Yeah, yeah, me yeah, myself and I. I. <laughs> um, so I, obviously it's easier said than done to be like, hey, just ignore them. Yeah. But fuck them. Fuck them. It's your life. Yeah. I think a lot of people, especially if it's an older relative, whether it's a parent or an aunt or uncle or grandparent, whoever, um, I feel like they, some people have a very like intense parenting style where they want to live vicariously through you. Oh yeah. And so if they see you not like fulfilling something they had in mind for you, it's like hard for them yeah to understand yeah so well, well it's, it's funny with that so i recently went through a breakup i'm not dating my boyfriend anymore um 
and I, I realized that it was like, even on the first situation, that was someone I, I knew deep down that it just wasn't my person. So we ended. Mm -hmm. And uh, how long were you guys together, if you don't mind me asking? Two years. Two years? Yeah. Uh -huh. we're, we're like right at that just turning two years age. Um, and for them, like, I saw a future with them in the sense of like security. Like, okay, I could, I could definitely like have a family with this guy. Like, I, when I did, like, when I was head over heels for him, I was like, yeah, I can have a family with this guy. I want a house with him. And then that kind of like started to sway away. So on my own, I'm like, oh, this is, this is me. Like, this is who I, like, I'm now happy with myself. Cause in the relationship, I didn't, I, I stopped being happy. But then after, after the relationship ended, I started to get in my head about this person's issue. Like, mm. oh, now I kind of like ruined my chances at like the, what I think I need by the time I'm 30. So I like called my dad and I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, dad, <laughs> I, I just want you, I was crying. I was like, dad, I just want you to know, like I, I cause my, my sister is in a relationship. My oldest sister is married and my brother's in a really like good, healthy relationship, gonna move in with her. Wow. And I'm the single like younger sibling. Mm. So I'm like, dad, I don't want you to worry about me. Like I'm happy. Like, cause he's, he's of the older generation <laughs> yeah, too. Yeah, so, yeah. Oh my God. He's like, of course, Danny, like you, you do you. And I'm like, thanks dad. Yeah, <laughs> like, thanks. Yeah. 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 It's such a supportive family. Yeah. Yeah, um, I, yeah. I think, yeah, you just go out your, like, there's, there's something awesome about like being single and like kind of like doing your own thing and that's when you really get to discover who you are mm -hmm. uh, as opposed to because then it can be difficult to grow with someone you know if you go back to that early relationship you know 25 it's it's difficult and so like it's it's rocky terrain to grow together as two people yeah um especially if you feel like codependent or anything yeah like it's like that. Oh, it's yeah. like inorganic i feel like because mm -hmm. if someone isn't as compromisable you like you grow kind of towards their side and then like it's like vice versa so you're not yeah. you in the end also i feel like these are the years to be single 26 almost 27 like that's hell the fucking yeah. fun time. Hell yeah. You know, like if if you do later in life think like, oh, it would be nice to settle down with someone or like to have a partner, then like you could do that when the time is right or if you meet the right person. Mm -hmm. Like like she said, like she's not actively looking. And if yeah. it happens to stumble upon her, I think that's the best way to go about that's it. That's the best way. There are so many people who, whether or not they, they're uncomfortable being on their own or being single and they, they want that partnership or they're lonely, like whatever the reason is, there's some people who get so in their own head of not being able to find someone mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or just like, oh, yep. like went on this date, didn't work out. Like, and we have another date next weekend and blah, blah, blah. It's like this grind that well, they're going through. With that, like in the sense, like, when I was single before my ex-boyfriend, I was I tried the Tinder and it's just, mm. I feel like I, 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 tried, I, the tried, the Tinder. Tinder. <laughs> I tried the Tinder. When I was 26, I tried that Tinder. No. <laughs> but like I put, I put like who I thought I was on Tinder and then you meet these yeah. people and it's not really organic. But I think another piece of advice I would like to give is when I had met my ex-boyfriend, it was, I wasn't looking. I met him in an escape room and I was like, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to shoot my shot. Like, uh, cause like when we met organically, we obviously have some sort of chemistry. I feel like you should, it's not, I don't find that actively looking, but when I see an opportunity, like you should try to take it. Cause I feel like that's also, that's not, that's not begging for a relationship, but you're no. also, you're like putting that effort in too. Cause right. you're not, you can't sit on your couch and like someone's like, Hey, I want to date you. Like you also got to put in that effort too. Yeah. So and it's, it's like everyone has their own pace and earn their own path. Like, like going back, like Jackie and I were met when I was like 26. And so for me, I was yeah. like, I was already like, okay. You know what I mean? Like I, I wasn't like searching, but when she happened to stumble across my path. A princess. I was like, a oh, princess. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Never will she look at me. Oh, she's looking at me. She's looking at me. What do I do? I don't know what my hands what do I, I don't do? know. And then like we, <laughs> know, we got together, we grew together and we were very much like, we communicated and we were like very much on the same path of like, we just were those type of people where it's like, we just l are stuck together. Yeah. And like, we're just like, doesn't matter what we're doing. Oh, we're in the same room. All right, cool. Yep. Yeah. And that's and, important too, yeah. to be able to like live together with someone, but still like be on your own in a way Yeah. where it's like, you don't need to necessarily be doing something together all the time. Yeah. But yeah, great question. Um, Best of luck, but ultimately just tell them to fuck off. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think you're solid. Though. I, I think, you know what I mean? I, yeah. I, I think in, in, in everything, I think it's like you definitely, you're on a good path. You know exactly, you, you know, you should be listening to. It. Look, mm -hmm. just, next family gathering, Thanksgiving, you just, you just, just hear it down the hallway. Just go, shut up, Jan. And I go, <laughs> <laughs> nobody wants your opinion, Jan. Yeah. 
go slap her in the face. I'm just kidding. <laughs> With the turkey. <laughs> well, sorry. All right. We got one more question, which I think we could speed run a little bit. This one says, hey, besties, this is somewhat of a multi-layered question, but how do you maintain a friendship when you're giving more than you're receiving? I have two friends who are really my only friends within a 150 mile radius. I'm in Austin. My best friend is in Houston. The two friends that live nearby are about 30 minutes away from me. But the last few times we've planned to get together, they have either flaked on me last minute or committed, but then never show up. That's awful. Mm. That's ghosting. (laughs) (laughs) This has happened on multiple occasions, including my birthday last year. What? It recently reached a breaking point where I had a panic attack because other than them, I don't have any girlfriends to hang out with, but I am tired of feeling like I'm the only one committing to plans only to be flaked on and having to stop being the one to try to coordinate the get togethers. We haven't hung out since the last time this happened, which was back in October, but we keep saying we need to get together soon. Although obviously nothing gets planned. So I guess my question is, do I continue to endure and inspect this sort of thing to continue? Do I keep waiting for someone else to make the plan so I'm not disappointed? Do I cut off the friendships? What do I do? I'll be honest. These don't sound like friends. These don't sound like friends. I'm going to be real with you. They don't sound like friends. And I get that making friends can be hard. And if you're like doing things on your own or you're not in environments where you can make friends. Yeah. I mean, like you could take up like yoga classes, cooking classes. And like there's definitely oh, yeah. people that are outgoing there where you can make friendships. You know, Bumble BFF. Yeah. Is an option. Oh. Uh, I haven't tried it, but I've heard good things about yeah. it. It's like Bumble, but for friends. Oh. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, I mean, making friends as an adult it's hard. If they're ditching you on the like your birthday, on your birthday, they some bitches. Right. <laughs> but then also just like if they just, oh, I'll be honest, they kind of sound fake as hell yeah, too. Yeah. It's yeah. like yeah, we gotta get together, bitch. What you mean we gotta get together? Yeah, Why the fuck you last time? <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I do wonder though if you have obviously you know I'm not putting the the onus on you. But just reaching out and saying like, hey, it would be really nice if you guys made plans once in a while. Like, I do feel like this is a bit of a one-sided friendship and like, you know, because you flaked on me this time or didn't show up, it made me feel like you guys don't really value this friendship. And, you know, it's it's kind of a bummer. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Because sometimes like people are just completely unaware Oh yeah, because the life life catches up, and then it just kind of like gets sidetracked. Yeah. I actually, I have a friend like that in Vegas, and she wouldn't mind me talking about this because we're just so open with each other with communication. Like, I'll make plans and get totally flaked on, or like I I straight up I'm like, look, I can't wait around for two hours. Like, I'm upset about this, and we'll like we'll just like straight up say that to each other, and that's I honesty. think that's what needs to happen is the honesty. Because if you're not communicating that what they're doing is hurting your feelings, like maybe they don't know like they probably literally have no idea what it is and like you gotta understand some people have like their own lives going on but if they're like not coming to your birthday and not saying anything about it or like saying that they're gonna come somewhere and don't show that, up yeah that's, 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 up. that's grounds these, for dismissal like these, if one needs to flake one thing to be like hey actually yeah. i'm not gonna be able to make yeah. it after all like okay it happens but just not showing up i'll be honest all this sounds pretty the examples sound pretty extreme they do where i'd be like I, uh, that's yeah, not no. a friend like you're just you're wasting your time yeah. At this point. I think the older you get too, I don't know how old this person is, this individual, but the older you get, I think you realize like, I only want to have relationships with people who put in the effort. Oh, 100%. As well. yeah. mm-hmm. I think like when you're younger, I feel like a lot of friendships are a little more like one-sided. I was just like, I'm just trying to have friends and like, you know, I'll put in the effort here. <laughs> please but talk to me. <laughs> please talk to me. Please hang out with me. But I think the older you get, you're just like, I don't have fucking time for this shit. Yeah. yeah. Like, oh, I want to hang out with people who want to hang out with me. Mm-hmm. Well, I also learned like, because of that friend, I... I, I, I taught myself like if this is negatively affecting me that's something i gotta cut out of my life because in the end of the day i'm gonna care about myself because that's all you can do is like protect yourself so i say in this situation they don't sound like good friends i would protect my happiness because like yeah. you can only try so much and like maybe best case scenario if you do care about them you cut them off like you just stop putting in that effort that kind of push they're like you know what i they they will self reflect and like yeah, i the need balls to put in, in their the- court type yeah. Situation. yeah yeah exactly yeah i think there's two roads to go down i think one is you just detach yourself because they don't sound like the best people right um or two and and you're going to have to really understand the 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 ring that you're getting in that like if you go to them approach them and say this is how i'm feeling that there could be a situation that they are truly that terrible and they try to flip it on you. Mm-hmm. So you have to Gaslight prepare you. yourself. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they you, get you just get salty. gaslit. And then so, <laughs> you <a> little salty. <laughs> um, and so like, you're, 
please understand that that's the arena you're getting in. So then that way, like, like I don't want that to affect you. It shouldn't, right? right? Don't let them have that. Yeah, yeah. And so, like, if you do approach them with that route and that plan of like, hey, this is hurting my feelings, and like, oh, and they, you know, they're being they absolutely try to make you feel terrible, about it. Yeah. then like, just just eject, pull the ripcord, get out of there. Yeah, People like that suck. Yeah, too. and, and like, not worth your time. <laughs> and like, if they're girls, girls can be mean, bro. Girls can be awful. <laughs> like, okay, I'm sorry. I feel like teenage girls too okay. are some of the meanest people to ever exist on the planet. <laughs> Little like, <Satans. laughs> Oh, man. It, it could be rough. Female friendships are hard. Mm -hmm. Not um, like us sweet boys. Not like sweet boys. Well, I think like... Y'all are like, fuck you, bro. Yeah. <laughs> it's like very simple. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you want to hang out? Yeah. We're like, cool. I'm going to create yeah, a sure. fake account, make plans with you and oh. not show up to any of them. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. It hurts my heart. But yeah. Um, I'm sorry that's happening to you. That fucking sucks. Um, I think, you know, as we kind of wrap it up, talk to them about it. Maybe they just mm -hmm. legitimately don't know um some people kind of are living in their own world in their own space in their own mind and they don't really understand how their actions are affecting people um but if they're not like receptive to it or understanding or if they as fredo said turn it on you get bolt <laughs> bye yeah yeah <laughs> i mean also like i guess like because i if it's like an issue of feeling lonely of like why you won't cut these people off. One thing when I feel lonely, what I'll pick up is like, I'll just like start doing things for myself to like make me feel good. Like yeah. if I have nothing to do after I get off stream, like super late, I'm like, oh, like I wish I had someone to hang out with. I'll just like make a dish. Like I'll cook something I've never cooked before and have a glass of wine and watch a movie. Like I'll do something Damn. for myself and it's, it, I feel yeah. good after I'm Living like, the dream. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, the oh. single life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can do whatever I want. Okay. Exactly. And also like, there are other people in the world. Yeah, you'll that's make That's true. Yeah. That's true. I mean, it's making, as you said, making friends as an adult is very challenging and it's not as easy as like, you go to school with this person. Yeah. yeah. Um, but maybe there's people who you work with who you could mm -hmm. befriend or you, clubs or exercise mm -hmm. classes as you guys recommended. Friends come and go. They do. I'm saying. There's, there's, I'm, I, this, tons of cities that have like this get together and and like a bunch of random people and make friends go 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 we'll just facilitate like the arena for it and Absolutely. you guys can just just play around yeah Absolutely. or pick up video games i met them through this <laughs> that's true yeah, 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 that's true. True. yeah. fortunately or unfortunately <laughs> yeah. i pay we'll him to be my know. yeah just pay your friends because i pay yeah. him to be my friend true. <laughs> we're friends <laughs> it's a win-win situation <laughs> i love this person yeah, very cool we're, we're friends yes <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you both so much for being on the show today. Fredo, thank you for being here. Fuya, thank you for joining oh, us. Yes. This is my first podcast. Thanks for having me. <gasps> of course. Thanks for popping my podcast cherry. You're welcome. <laughs> um, Fredo, where do you want to plug anything? No. For the, the viewers, where can people find you? Any any shows that you want to plug? Yeah. Um, you know, I'm running around uh the Rooster Teeth hangar shooting stuff with a group called Chima Hunter. Uh your significant other Trevor is in that. Yep. Um, <laughs> I forgot it. it tra tra bar. <laughs> tra tra you guys got a podcast too that you do? Yeah, Red Web, uh, where Trevor brings all these mysteries to me that I have no clue at, at, and what. And so sometimes it's absolutely terrifying. Sometimes <laughs> I'm very intrigued. Mostly it's the former than yeah. the latter. Um, so that's Red Web. And you can listen to Red Web on any podcast uh, app that you have. Awesome. Yeah. And Fuya, where could people find you? The interwebs, <laughs> all the internet. I am, I am the internet. Uh, I mainly stream on Twitch. Uh, mm -hmm. It's just Fuya. Twitch.tv slash Afraid of Police. That's where you find Fuya. Yeah. It's Twitch for Afraid that, That's where you find Fuya. Yeah. <laughs> you'll, you'll find me in his chat plugging my own Twitch channel. Yeah. <laughs> Every time. Yeah. Hey, by the way, guys, I'm live as well. Uh, uh, and social media. I assume social media. Well. The only thing different is Twitter is iFuya, but if you type Fuya, it comes up. So Fuya, Fuya everywhere. But uh, yeah, I stream every single day and Saturdays with these dorks. So. Yeah, it's okay. yeah, it's very true. Awesome. Well, thank you for being here. Yes. Fredo, thank you for joining us again. Thanks for having me again. And uh, everyone at home watching, thank you for being here. Thank you for watching Always Open. New episodes come out every single Tuesday, so make sure you are subscribed to the All Good Knowers YouTube channel or wherever you get podcasts. And we'll see you next week. We love you. We love you. Good luck with everyone's situation. Bye. <laughs> By the way, good luck. <laughs> Wait, give me my money. My wallet. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>Hey guys, thank you so much for watching that episode of Always Open. Make sure you give a follow to Fuya, our lovely guest, and make sure to subscribe to the All Good No Worries channel if you're not already, where we have new episodes of Always Open every single Tuesday, as well as other fantastic shows every single Thursday. Thank you for watching.